Today, I'm going to start a new series called Renew My Mind. The, 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 the picture is on paper. You're writing yourself a note to me, renew my mind, sincere, sincerely, me. And uh, this is foundational in your walk with God. Your mind is the one aspect of your life that if you don't take control of it, it will take control of you. You become what you think. You become what you meditate on. You become what you prioritize. How you live your life in faith is how you will begin to live your life. And God has called us to live our lives with a renewed mind so much to the fact it's the renewed mind of what we were originally intended to operate in before the fall of man. I'm going to explain that in a few moments and what that looks like. But why do we need to renew our mind? Let me answer that question a little bit differently than you think I would. Our physical body is what is in contact with this natural world. Uh, our physical body seems to take complete control of our physical world. We give our physical body control, maybe intentionally, maybe unintentionally, but we allow ourselves to watch what we want to watch, to say what we want to say, to do what we want to do, think how we want to think. We give our physical body complete control, and that is not what is supposed to to happen. That is allowing our flesh to control us. What we need to understand is your spiritual life, your spirit man, is the superior life that you are called to live. It is superior to our physical life. It is superior to our natural life. It is superior to our materialistic life. Get this, the spirit is the highest form of living because our spirit man connects us to God who is our source. Let me say it again for those that didn't catch on to that. Our spirit man connects us back to God who is our source and living in this way is the highest form of living. Our physical life, which are, is our senses, connects us to a lower form of living. So we cannot let our senses dominate what we say. We can't let them dominate what we do who we are. We need to renew my mind to the Word of God, and if we don't, our mind will become carnal. We were originally created to live in the Spirit, in full submission to our Lord. Our souls, which is how we live today, were created to be completely yielded to God. We were never created on the basis of the carnal contact with the physical world being in control of us. The fall of man happened when man corresponded with the physical world rather than the spirit world. The fall of man happened when the, when, when the physical world, man corresponded with it instead of staying connected to the spirit world. Let me explain that. In the Garden of Eden, life was perfect. Adam and Eve had everything they could possibly want. They were living the ideal life. They lived in the presence of God. And in Genesis chapter 2, they were told not to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. They chose to disobey God and everything they lived in, the relationship, the intimacy, the peace, the presence, all of it died instantaneously. Their physical body did not die, but their spiritual body did. Death is a separation because Adam and Eve no longer lived in the state of eternal life, their souls and body began to decay. Without the Spirit of God in them, absence of life came into being. When Adam and Eve ate of the tree, um, well, let, let's, we, you guys don't have outlines today. We're going to do it up on the screens. Um, let's, let's see what, what it says in Genesis chapter 2. Verse 17, as Adrian reads. But you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat from it, you will certainly die. Look what it says. Leave that up there just for a second, Travis, please. The, it says, the knowledge of good. If you eat of the tree, 
you begin to learn what is good. Up until that point, they didn't even know what was good. Good. We look at it and say, oh, it brought evil into the world, but it also brought what is good. The understanding of what good happened. There is now evil, but there's also knowledge of what is, is subpar living, of what we would call a good life. But it is subpar to the spirit life that we're supposed to be living. Man was originally created for the sole purpose of abiding in the presence of God. And in that place is perfection. There is no such thing as lack. There is no such thing as sickness. There is no such thing as disappointment. There, We were not created to have knowledge of what was good or evil. We were made only to be in God's presence. Listen to this. Anything outside of the sufficiency of God was to be foreign to our natural bodies. Anything outside of sufficiency of God was to be foreign to us. Now here we are 2,000 years later and we're consumed by what's good. We lost the innate desire to be led by the Spirit of God where in that place is perfection, in that place is sufficiency, in that place is the power and the, and the, the, uh, the, the confidence of who and what the Word of God has to offer you, what the spiritual life has for you, what the source of God has for you. And, and what we have to do to get ourselves back to that place is begin to renew our mind on how we were originally created and called to walk him. Not understanding of what we know as good or evil, but know that we are renewed and living by the Spirit and by the Spirit only. It is in this place we have no shame. When we live by the Spirit, we have no lack. When we live by the Spirit, there is nothing in us that would separate us from God. So therefore, we are connected to the source who provides everything that we could possibly ask, think, or imagine. We have full faith, and, and our faith draws us into the supply of what heaven has for your life. Are you guys getting this? Am I talking too fast? Do I need to slow down? So the question becomes, how do we renew our minds to a place where we are completely yielded to the Spirit? I'm not going to answer that question today. <laughs> I want to lay some foundational work for you. And over the next, I don't know, three weeks, 15 weeks, I don't know, we are going to unpack what that looks like by living a life by the Spirit. Living a life that is a renewed mind. Our mission here at this church is we are a spirit-filled church leading people to become fully devoted disciples of Jesus Christ. To help us better lead people, we need to be people who are better led. To be led by the Spirit. We need to have an understanding of who the Spirit is. We need to be able, be able to understand that our minds are renewed only in the Word of God. We need to understand how our spirit operates in each of us individually so we can do what God has called each of us to do individually. In, in our home, we don't do it all the time, but we do our best to live this way. If you're negative, I ain't going to be around. We're not putting up with it. If you, if you doubt, ain't going to happen. We walk by faith. I don't wake up every morning and think, God, I hope, I hope my business does well today. No, I choose to walk in that my business is already successful because the Spirit of God has made it successful. I'll tell you something kind of funny. Adrienne will get into the bathroom and she's talking to herself in the mirror. Today's going to be a shopping day. I'm going to find the best deals that I've ever seen. God's going to go before me and make these deals work out to my benefit. There is a lifestyle that we live that no matter what situation we're in, no matter what circumstance we're in, we 
choose to live by faith that God is for us, that God has worked things out for you. And no matter what you say, do, think, or imagine, God has already prepared and planned a road or a pathway for you to walk in. You just have to learn how to walk in it. You do that by living a renewed mind. A couple weeks ago, um, Kern and I and Terrence went out and played golf. And Terrence, he plays golf like every other day. He wishes he could play golf every other day, but he's got to work. And I play golf like once a year. And Terrence gets up on the first hole, and he's not here so I can say this. He's on the beach in Alabama, so he'll call me out on it later. But he'd get up on the first hole, correct me if I'm wrong, that ball's gonna, I'm not sure where my ball's going to go today. And he, just, he kept saying it over and over and over. And I kept saying, no, you get up there and hit the ball like it. He'd go in his bag and grab an old ball like it's going to go going in the water. I'm like, man, you're already expecting to hit this ball in the water. You are expecting the outcome of this thing before it ever happens. And after the 11th hole, we got to the first 10 on the 11th one. I started telling myself, my balls will start going in the woods. I don't know where it's going. Because I was around someone who started thinking and talking and acting negative, it started bouncing off of me. And we had to come to a place where we said, no, 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 no matter, I'm going to stand up on this tee knowing good and well my ball's going to end up in the woods. But I'm going to tell myself I'm going to hit the ball straight where it's supposed to go because I'm going to change the way I think so that no matter what comes my way, I'm not going to let negativity of what might happen come into my life and it begin to affect my results of what I'm trying trying to get done. Out of the mouth should flow rivers of life in all situations, even on the golf course, in your marriage, in your home, in your job, in your families. Out of the mouth speaks life and death. It does not matter what situation or circumstance. You do not let your mouth speak anything outside of faith. You do not let your mouth speak anything outside of faith. That means no matter what is going on, I will not let my mouth speak anything negative into the situation. I speak only the word of God. Romans 12.2. This is going to be our text for this series. Go ahead and read it, please. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. All right, before we jump into this text, this is the text for the series, but before we jump into it, we've got to get a few things straight. We've got to get some clutter out of our mind. Um, every one of us have clutter in our mind. You know what clutter is? Clutter gets in the way. It's just there. Uh, let me let me give you an example of what I mean, and then I'll unpack it as we as we go. I can tell Abigail, hey, go clean your room, Abigail. She'll go in there, pick up the things off the floor, open up the drawers, stuff them in the drawers, close the drawers back. I walk in there, and I'm like, wow, the room looks clean. Is the room clean? The floor's clean. Is the room clean? Why not? Because there are elements inside the room that still have clutter involved in them. <laughs> if your mind is renewed and there's still clutter in there, is your mind renewed? Her floor was clean. The room looked clean, but when you got a closer perspective of the drawers, you found out the room wasn't actually clean. So in order for us to have a clean room, we've got to clean out the drawers. We've got to clean out from underneath the bed. She found something the other day that was underneath there for however long, and she's like, this was broken a long time ago. And I was like, why'd you stick it on your bed? She's like, I didn't know what else to do with it. I didn't want to throw it away because I liked it. I'm like, but it's broken. And she's like, so what do we do with it? Throw it in the trash. Oh, okay. So it sat under her bed for two months, but the room looked clean. She hadn't thought about that thing in two months, but there was still clutter. If she understood it or not, there was still clutter in the room. We have to declutter our minds so that God can renew them to the place of where we were supposed to have been 2,000 plus years ago, a living and breathing and abiding in the presence and the Spirit of God. So there is clutter in our minds that we have to 
deal with. Back uh, two years ago, when, when did we have those big, long, cold spells? Uh, was it like two years ago or so? It's been a while. I got a call uh, from a lady. Actually, it was uh, from the lady's son saying, hey, my mom's house is flooded. She's 70-ish years old. Uh, my mom's house is flooded, and it's pretty bad. And I've pretty much seen everything, so it doesn't really bother me. Okay, like I'm not judging anyone's house when I'm in it. I don't really care. I'm just there to do what I need to do. So I go in there to start doing water mitigation and go in there. And when I walk in there, this 70-year-old lady who... Um, the pipe in her ceiling busted and had been running for five days. She didn't know what to do. She called plumbers and couldn't get anybody out there because everyone was busy going and doing big jobs and all that. No one was going out there and paying attention. Her son flew in from Seattle to shut the water off out by the road because she couldn't get somebody here. I walk in, this lady, she is standing in about a foot of water, sitting on the couch, and her feet are just in the water. What? What, what are you? She's like, I didn't know what else to do. So she just sat there. So the son has to fly back home. He has to go back to work. And I go to, I'm talking to this mom and I'm like, hey, this is going to be a pretty big job. And do you have a place you can go? And she's like, I can go upstairs. I'm like, well, you're upstairs. It's flooded too. Like, there's no place you can. So we called her daughter. Her daughter flew in from the, I think South Carolina, from the East Coast, came and picked her up. And we talked, worked out a game plan. She took her mom and they went to the East Coast for a few months. And before all that transpired, um, the thing that I didn't tell you was this lady was a hoarder. I took... 13 employees. I went on Facebook. Anyone need to work? 20 bucks an hour. Come and I found 13 people. Came into her house from 8 to 5, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. for three days. And we took out junk that was in her house. We filled up three, if you know anything about construction, 40 yard dumpsters overflowing. And I could have had a fourth one and a fifth one, but we ended up getting some trailers hauling stuff out as well. And when we were walking around the house, I was letting her know like, hey, everything's ruined. Like nothing can be saved in here. And there was a magazine that was just trashed. And I said, we need to trash it. And she's like, oh no, that magazine has special purpose to me. Well, well why? Well, I got it one day. And, well, I can't get rid of it. Uh, no joking. There was a ice cream wrapper that was trash. I picked it up. I said, we can throw this away, right? And she was like, well, no, my grandson had that ice cream when he was here a couple years ago. And it reminds me of him. I said, but it's got to go in the trash. And she basically came to the conclusion that um, me and her weren't going to be friends. <laughs> And as nice as, as nice of a guy as I am, I did everything I could to make this lady feel comfortable about we're about to tear up her house. And uh, to make a, a long story short, um, as we were hauling stuff out, we found an extra bathroom that she did not even know existed. She had completely forgotten about it. There was a path from the front door, you couldn't get in the garage. It was from the front door to the couch, to the kitchen, and then there was a bathroom over here to the side, a little path. You just walk like this. There was stuff literally from here, pile floor to ceiling in this stuff. Just absolute chaos. We got her gone, or her, her daughter took her, <laughs> said that the wrong way. Her daughter took her and took her away for a couple months. We began to trash stuff and go through everything. And then after about four days, I went back out there to check on everything. And what I began to see was a 10 acre piece of property, a 3,500 square foot home that was worth over a million dollars that this lady allowed to be trashed because at some point her mind got cluttered with something and it stopped her from living the life that she was called to live. 
She couldn't garden anymore. She couldn't take care of her house. She couldn't have people over anymore. And all of it happened because at some point in her life, something in her mind got cluttered. And whenever it got cluttered, it created a path for her to follow, a destiny that she chose to go down because she would not renew her mind on how to live her life. It's a weird example but what I'm trying to say is you limit yourself by what you allow in your life. What you allow in your mind will limit what you become. It will limit what you can do. It will limit your personal growth, your spiritual growth. It will limit your purpose. It will limit your destiny. We tell ourselves all the time, you don't deserve to be blessed. You don't deserve to walk in the abundance of heaven. You don't deserve to find a husband or a spouse or a, a wife. You don't deserve to have this or, or have that. You tell yourself these things all the time. And what are you doing? You are cluttering your mind with things that are not abiding by the Spirit of God. And so you begin to create a pathway for you to go down, either good or evil, it's still the knowledge of it. You create a pathway that you, be, that you choose to go down, and it's going down with a mind that's cluttered with what's good or evil. We are not to dwell on the negative. We are not to dwell on the clutter. We don't dwell on on doubt. We don't dwell on inferiority. Rather, you dwell on what the Word of God says. You dwell on what the Word of God has for your life. You, you, you have to program your mind to see yourself, to think of yourself, to operate in your, as yourself the way that God has created you to operate and walk in. Not this 70-year-old lady who had no clue about anything and her life had been put on pause for years because she allowed clutter to be in her house is there clutter in your home I don't I'm not asking in your physical house I've been in some of your houses there's clutter no I'm just kidding the, is there a clutter in your mind in your spirit in your heart in what you say in what you think in what you do in how you live your life is there clutter and if there is we need to renew our mind. The first Sunday I preached here in January, I was so scared. Some of you were there. Not many of you. Some of you were there. It was bad. I gave it all I got. I came up, and at that time, we didn't have any musicians, which we thank the Kearns in Boston. Thank you in Rome and Romo and our drummers in Tennessee with family right now. He'll be back next week. But that first Sunday, it was me on my guitar and... We all know how that goes. We need other musicians. That's why we're thankful for these. And I got done doing my guitar, doing my four songs. I think I did three songs back then. I was trying to hurry up and get it over with. And doing three songs. And then I preached a sermon, and I gave it all I had. My back was sweating, kind of like it is now. Like, I was just, everything I had. And in all honesty, when I got done, I was like, hey, that's not bad. We can run with this. God, you can use me. This is going to be okay. And as soon as we got done, this lady walks up to me. She's no longer here, so I can say it. Even if she was here, I'd say it anyway, so I didn't really care. But she walked up to me, and she's like, did you have a background track playing while you're playing your guitar? And I said, yeah, we're trying different things out. She's like, well, it distracted everybody in here, and the worship was terrible. I just don't know how to worship God like that. And I looked at her. Everything in me wanted to just you know, but I said, you know, thank you for letting me know. We're trying this thing out, and we're just figuring out what works, what doesn't work, and, and I appreciate you letting me know. And um, just about 30 seconds later, she walked away. My smile, <laughs> I deflated myself by what this cruddy old lady said. I had just poured out my heart, preaching this sermon. The content was good. Yeah, okay. And all she could say was the music distracted her. And she walked away. 
and I stood there for a second, and there was like eight other people in the room, and they were all talking, and I was at the back. It's in at Madison Square. I was at the back, on that back row. I just closed my eyes, and I, 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 I would love to say I was holier than now, but I was like, God, did you really call me to do this? This lady, she's older and she's more sophisticated and she's telling me this isn't, I, I just begin to doubt myself and say things to myself. And about maybe a minute after that, I begin to kind of have, you know, you ever had that moment where you're like, you're going through something, you're like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Wait just the cotton picking second here. I had that. As I was sitting there doubting myself, all of a sudden I began to rise up. Something began to rise up in me, and I just began to laugh. I was like, ah. <laughs> I said, devil, is that all you got for me? I can take that, no problem at all. And I began to speak to myself, God, you have called me to do this. I will walk in what you've called me to do. I don't care what anyone ever says about me or thinks about me or talks about me. I will not let the clutter of someone else's confusion in their life affect what you have called upon my life to operate in. So let me give you a word of advice today. You can tell me anything you need to tell me, and I don't give a rip. Because I will not allow you or anyone else to have control over what God is doing in my life. Just as for you, you should not listen to anyone else around you to say, oh, you're not good enough to do this. Oh, that wasn't good enough to hear. You'll never make it to this. This is no good in you. You tell them to shut their mouth. My God supplies all my needs. I am walking in what you've called me to walk in. I will do what he's called me to do. I will learn in the process, but I, by faith, will not allow my mind to be cluttered by negativity. You walk in what God has called you to walk in. And I begin to laugh. And then when I got home, I got mad again that I even let myself get to that place where I was like, I let her affect me. Uh, Keaton's not here, but uh, Keaton worked with me this summer uh, doing my job. And uh, Keaton would come in and he was like, man, this customer said this. And I, I remember I, I pulled him and said, Keaton, let's have a conversation here. You cannot give anyone power over your life. These people are messed up, they're mad about the world, they're not saved, they're going through hell, and they don't even know what's wrong with them. And I'm telling you, do not elect, allow them and their attitude, what they say, affect you. I will give no one that kind of power over my life. There are people in this room who you are holding on to situations that happened in 2013, 2009, 2007. You have given control over your life, over your destiny, over the pathway that God has for you, to someone else who couldn't even care less. So therefore, your mind has been filled with clutter, and that clutter will stop your mind from being able to be renewed to walk in everything that God has for you. The enemy's main target in your life is your mind. If he can control your mind, it will keep you from allowing God to turn whatever situation you're in around. I'm going to start preaching here in a minute. There was, uh, in Second Chronicles, there's a story of the Amalekites. We're not going to go there, um, but basically there was a battle that was going to go on. They were going to take out Israel. And in verse 7, King Hezekiah says, Men, don't be afraid of this army. We have a greater power operating on our side. Then the king of Syria sent a letter to the king of Israel telling him in this letter, We have taken out all the cities around you. There's, their God didn't help them, and we're coming for you next. The enemy is always going to try to get in your mind first. The enemy knew, the king of, king of Syria knew, if I can get into his mind, if I, can, if I can kind of bluff him into thinking something, that I'm going to get the one up on him. That's what the enemy tries to do in your mind. He's telling you, you'll never be any good. You'll always live broken, defeated, and poor, and stupid. You're always going to be this. He gets in your mind. And if you allow your mind to stay cluttered, you begin to operate and walk in what that cluttered mind's supposed to, or what that cluttered mind looks like. The enemy is telling these things to you because the enemy is a coward. He has no power in your life. But if he can get you to think something, you just gave him power over your life. The enemy comes for your mind. He comes 
to take your mind because he knows if I can get them to think this way, I got them. I got them, Gina. I got them. But God is breathing in your direction. God is moving in your life. God is on the throne. It says in verse 21 of 2 Chronicles, God sent an angel that destroyed the enemy's army. Hezekiah refused to let fear or doubt to get into his mind. God fought the battle that they couldn't do on their own. There, there, there is a battle that you are fighting, that you are going through, that you're trying to do on your own. And God's saying to you today through his word, let me fight the battle. Quit taking up the, 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 the sword of the, of the fight and let me fight it for you. I'm in control. So if we're going to get the clutter out of our life, we have to know what our part is, and then we have to know what God's part is. Our part's really simple. We just walk in faith and obedience in the word. Simple, isn't it? That's all we ever do, right? We're 100%. We're in it, right? No. That's our part. In, in every situation, we walk in faith and obedience to the word, and God's part is let him have control. He will work it out. Quit trying to take control of what God wants to do. You walk in faith and obedience and let God work out the details. That's the faith-filled life. I'm trusting that no matter what goes on, God is working on my behalf. I'm trusting that no matter every house I go to, I walk in under faith because God's already been there before me before ever I pulled into the driveway. Everything I do, I do with the faith of God already gone in before me to take care of it. Okay. Isaiah 26 Three, look at your screen. You keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. There were three guys in the Bible who were about to be thrown into the furnace. Anybody remember their names? Why were they getting thrown into the fire? Because they wouldn't bow down to the king. Let me show you what a fully renewed mind is at full measure. Let's look at this one, Travis. Read this one slow. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. That is a powerful position. I have it in bold. When you can say, I'm going to stay in peace if it works out in my way or if it does not work out in my way. That's the renewed mind. That God, no matter what happens, I'm staying faithful to you. If it works out in my behalf, awesome. If it doesn't work out in my behalf, awesome. I will not go against the Spirit of God in my life. I will not go against the Word of God in my life. As we start this series, I want you to pay attention to what's going on around you. Live your life with a conscious effort over the next few weeks that we don't allow anything to clutter our minds. Your time is too valuable. The end is close. I said it a few months ago. The end might not be near, I don't know, but my time is. So therefore, I've got to walk in that, not in what could be. And so therefore, I've got to live a renewed mind. My mind has to be renewed. If I'm going to live how God has called me to live, my mind needs to be renewed. And I want to talk about what that looks like over the next few weeks. But I read, or back in, 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 the, um, in the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve were there, we talked about it at the beginning, they were in peace. They were in the presence of God. 
It wasn't until they heard the voice of a serpent that cluttered their mind. And the serpent knew if he could clutter their mind from being renewed, he could take them out. The, the enemy is trying to clutter your mind. If you allow him, it can take you out. I read an article a while back that is, is kind of off topic, but it's about sheep. You guys have been around sheep before? Um, this particular article was that sheep don't like to give birth next to other sheep. They don't like the noise of the herd being around. If there's a lot of commotion, a lot of movement, that sheep who is about to give birth will go off to the side of the field where no other sheep are at and give birth in the silence by themselves. <laughs> in that same understanding, when your mind is full of clutter, you can't give birth to what God's put inside you. In the peaceful atmosphere, the sheep wants to give birth. But yet we say, God, we want you to use us like you've never used us before. But our mind has so much noise all around. I want to ask you for the next few weeks, pull yourself away from the noise. Pull yourself away from the commotion. Pull yourself away from anything that will clutter your mind from limiting your ability to operate in your destiny. Because it's in the stillness. It's in the quietness. It's in the non-commotion that your purpose will be birthed. That your destiny will be birthed. That your hunger will be birthed in you. If you've got all the noise going on around you, it's really hard to hear God's voice. It's really hard to press in. It's really hard to say, God, I'm, I'm running after you and I've got all this clutter going on. So over the next couple of weeks, Get the clutter out of your mind. Consciously make an effort to think things. And I'm going to talk to you about how next week. But think, think. Whenever that story comes up that happened four years ago and you begin to relive that story, that's a cluttered mind. That's a cluttered mind. If we live a renewed mind, we have the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ is how we were intended to operate in this earth, in the peace and the presence of God. If you don't walk in the peace and the presence of God, you have a cluttered mind. So over the next couple of weeks, I want you to make the conscious effort to declutter your mind. Every time something comes to you, nope, you, you, you speak the word into that situation. We said it a while ago. Whenever that lady came and spoke against me, not me, but spoke against what I was doing, I got the word of God. No, the Bible, Jesus, you said this. You said, whenever something comes against your mind, you speak against it. You don't allow that thought to take captive over you. You speak against it. You retaliate against it and let your mind be renewed. Will you do that for me? Let's pray. God, I ask by the power of your spirit that we live a renewed mind, that this week, next week, the week after, as we press in for more of you, I pray, God, that through your anointing, through your spirit, through who you are, you help us come to a place where we can be more effectively led by your spirit, where we can be in tune with your guiding and your leading. And so God, I pray the noise that tries to come up in our minds, that that is shut down and we, we, we ask that our minds be decluttered so that way we have open heavens over our mind. Open heavens over our marriages, open heavens over our relationships, over our kids, over everything about us, so that way we live our lives in such a way that our mind is renewed on you. That nothing can come against us. That we are your children. And in that, we have access to everything that heaven has for us. And so we live with that in mind, that our mind is fixed on you. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for tuning in today. For more content like this, visit our website, www.pathwaychurchok.com to see the variety of ways you can download this content and so much more. It's our pleasure that you would tune in, and we believe that if you take the content you just heard, write down the parts that spoke to you, and work on a plan to apply it, you will not be the same person a year from now. We hope today you can take this content, apply it, share it, let it change you, and you can become all God has called you to become. Thank you again for tuning in. We'll be together again soon. Until then, keep growing.